One of the big uses where contingency tables comes in handy is in medical testing. Um, in terms of medical testing, let's consider that if we have a person with a disease and they go into a test to take a test to screen to see if they have that disease or not. So they're trying to do some research. Well, the problem is, is that these medical tests and screenings aren't 100% perfect. And so what we want to be able to do is have a way that we can quantify that and figure out a variety of probabilities based on the fact that the tests aren't 100% perfect. As we set up a contingency table, basically the way that things are breaking down is like this. You are gonna have some people that have a disease and you're gonna have some people that don't have the disease. And all of them are gonna come in for some sort of a screening or test. Now, when they take the test, they're going to get a result from the test. They are either going to test positive, which means they have the, the test says they have the disease, or they're going to test negative. That says that they don't have the disease. And of course, anytime we're dealing with contingency table, we're gonna have a total row down here. This spot down here, the total of totals is what we call our grand total. And in this case, it's going to be all of the people that are tested. Our total of all the people that are tested, some will have the disease for real, some will not have the disease, some will test positive and some will test negative, right? And so people in each of these categories will add up to whatever that total number of people is. Of, everyone that got tested. Now, the, the, a good test is going to give you a positive test result if you actually have the disease. So this is what we call a true positive. You test positive and you have the disease. The other thing that's good is a true negative, and that happens down here. We take the test and the test says negative and we don't have the disease. These are the things that we want. If we have a test that's not 100% accurate, however, we're going to end up with numbers in these categories here. If you don't have the disease, but you test positive, we're going to call this a false positive. The test says you're positive, but you aren't actually sick. The other type of mistake that can be made is what we call a false negative, and those numbers are going to show up down here. A false negative happens if you get a negative test, but you do have the disease. So if you have a false negative, you're missing the diagnosis. Or if you have a false positive, you're getting a test result that's scary, but you don't actually have the disease. So these are different situations that can happen. And hopefully these numbers are small and these numbers are big. All right, so now that we have a basic idea how we can set up a contingency table for medical testing, let's look at a specific sample. 1% of women over 50 have breast cancer. Mammograms have a 20% false negative rate. So again, going back to our table before, a false negative is one where you get a negative test result, but you do actually have the disease. You do have breast cancer. And then here it says that 9.6% of mammograms detect breast cancer when it's not actually there. So these would be cases of a false positive. Okay, so with that in mind, let's set this up. We're gonna have a test that says positive. We're gonna have a test that says negative. And a total. Over here, we're gonna have breast cancer or we're not gonna have breast cancer. And we'll have a total column here as well. Now notice that all of our descriptions up here above are dealing with percentages. That means we don't actually have a good total number that we can use. 
but dealing with the percentages ends up getting a little bit confusing. So what I recommend doing in these cases, as you're setting up your contingency table, let's just pick a total size for the population. I like to pick something kind of big, like 100,000, because sometimes I'm dealing with some smaller, um, smaller percentages, and I want to make sure that my numbers don't have too many decimals because they become difficult to interpret and people tend to make mistakes. All right, so here is my total. What I'm interested in finding out is if a patient gets a positive mammogram, what the probability is that they actually have breast cancer. And to do that, I'm going to need this contingency table figured out. The first piece of information that I have is this one here, and it talks about some totals. It says that 1% of the women over 50 have breast cancer. All right, well, in this case, what that means is I am looking at 1% 1 of 100,000. Anytime I want to find a percent of something, make sure that you change that to its decimal form. A percent of 100,000 means I'm going to take 0 0.01 times it by 100,000 and see what I get. And in this case, when I do that, I get 1,000. Ah, sorry, excuse me. So what does that mean? 1% of women over 50 have breast cancer. If there's 100,000 women over 50, 1% of those have cancer. This information doesn't tell us anything about the test result. It only tells us about if they actually have the disease or not. And this would be gathered from data by the CDC or something along those lines. All right, now that we're here, I have two out of three pieces of information in the bottom row. So if 1,000 of these 100,000 people have cancer, then the other 99,000 people do not. Okay. So now I need to use and find some additional information. The next piece of information that I'm told here is that women have a 20% false negative rate. Now, a false negative rate gives us information about two things. It's telling us about the test, and it's also telling us about whether they have cancer or not. A false negative means that they have a negative test that's not true. They actually have the disease. And if you remember from um, our description above, our false negatives landed in this square down here. If I have a false negative rate, it means that they have cancer but got a negative test result. So that 20% is going to be 20% of the people that have cancer got a false negative. So 20% of 1,000 is 0.2 times 1,000 which is 200. So there were 200 false negatives, people that have cancer but tested negative, and the screening missed the diagnosis. However, um, of those 1,000 people that had cancer, 200 got a negative test, which means that the remaining 800 were correctly diagnosed with a positive test. Okay, so now we have a bunch of our um, table filled in. The next piece of information here says that 9.6% of the mammograms that detect breast cancer when it's not actually there. So they don't have cancer, but they do get a positive test. Those are our false positives, and they show up here in this case. So they get a positive test result, but they don't actually have the disease. Now, in this case, it's going to be 9.6% of these people that don't have cancer get a positive test result. So I'm going to have to find 9.6% of just these 99,000 people. So 0 0.096 times 99,000 is 9,504 people got a false positive. Now this seems kind of crazy. If we look at how many positive tests there were, there were the 800 people that were correctly diagnosed, but there were 9,504 people 
that were incorrectly diagnosed as having cancer when they didn't actually have it. There were a total of 10,304 positive test results in this case. So what does that mean in terms of my calculations and stuff here? Well, it's pretty interesting because what this is telling, why did they, that we end up with so many false positives? Well, it's because not that many people had breast cancer in the first place when we were looking at it. So even though 9.6% isn't a whole lot, it ends up affecting a lot of people because the group that we were pulling it from had a lot of people in it. All right, now we have enough information to fill everything else out. Um, if 99,000 people uh, did not have cancer, but 9,504 of them got a positive test result, we can subtract and find that 89,496 people were correctly diagnosed as not having cancer. Um, we can, again, I need this plus this to equal the 99,000. I can find this total just by adding straight across. 200 plus 89,496 gives me 89,696. So that's how many total negative tests were um, resulted in, out of these 100,000. And I can always double check this to make sure that um, I end up with 100,000 in the other direction here. So a total of 10,304 positive tests and 89,696 negative tests does in fact give me a total of 100,000 people. So now I have my contingency chart entirely filled out based on this data here. So what does that tell me and how can I answer the question? Well, let's look at what the question's asking us again. If a patient gets a positive mammogram, what's the probability that they actually have breast cancer? Well, notice in this case, we have this word if again. So what we're doing is we're limiting to only the patients who have a positive mammogram. This is a conditional probability. So I'm only interested in people that had a positive test result. So I'm only interested in this top row. If I'm looking at positive test results, there were a total of 10,304 people that had a positive test result. So that is my bottom number that I'm looking at. I'm only interested in this case. Now, if they get a positive mammogram, what's the chance that they actually have breast cancer? Well, 800 of those positive tests correctly diagnosed that they had cancer. So I'm gonna do 800 divided by 10,304. If I do that on my calculator, I end up with 0 0.0776 or 7.76% chance. So if I get a positive result, there's still less than a 10% chance that I actually have the disease because of the way that the breakdown happens in terms of these false positive results. This is really important for medical care professionals to, to understand when they give out test results um, because based on how these uh, false negative and false positive results come out and into play, it's entirely possible, especially for rarer diseases, that a positive test result isn't actually going to be a legi legitimate disease. So be careful when you're talking about things, we can say something like, you know, we saw something concerning in the screening test come back in for maybe a different type of a test or let's test again and see what happens because there's still such a high chance that it was a false positive. So just something to kind of keep in mind in terms of nursing care or how they deliver that. If they just say you got a positive test, you have cancer, we're causing these extra 9,504 people to be unnecessarily concerned um, and worried about what's going on.